Hey everyone, Rose here, and I've made some materials. Before I start on the materials themselves, I'm gonna need a UV map. Unlike with the previous character I made, this UV map isn't gonna be mirrored. That's because the Hypoly sculpt itself is slightly asymmetrical, so in order for everything to work out properly, both sides of the model need their own separate space on the texture. That being said, I'm keeping the mirror modifier for now because I want all my seams to be mirrored and keeping the modifier will save me the time of having to manually mirror them over later. The first thing I do while UV unwrapping is split up the model into individual UV islands for all the different pieces. For example, the arms, the legs, the torso, the tail, the head, everything has its own UV island. For that I either use Alt Select to select whole edge loops and mark them as seams, or I use Control Select to tag seams. I also have Live Unwrap turned on, so that way I can instantly see how the results look on my UV map. Once I've split everything up into separate pieces, I start adding in extra seams to kind of relax the UV mapping. For example, I add seams down the length of the arms and legs, and at the side of the face or along the bottom of the tail. At this point, it's very useful to have some kind of grid texture in the material for your object, so that way you can see if there's any stretching. Once I'm pretty much happy with how everything looks, it's time to apply the mirror modifier. This is really important because as long as the mirror modifier is on, it's pretty much like you have one long seam just going around the entire center of the model. So you don't get a very accurate picture of how the stretching is going to be. So once I've applied the modifier, I can go around and make sure I didn't get any extra stretching and if need be add a couple of extra seams here and there. Next, I can take a look at all my UV islands, group them together and kind of start arranging them a little bit and also make a couple of minor tweaks to them here and there where I still find a little bit of stretching that I want to tweak. And now it's time to start working on some of the other objects that make up this model. The first thing I work on is the eyes. I decided to replace the UV sphere eyes I had with round cubes. For that, I add in a cube and give it a subdivision surface modifier and a cast modifier. Then I apply the modifiers and go into edit mode and add a few seams and unwrap them. Next, I do all those little extra details on the face, specifically the eyelashes and eyebrows. For those, I change the solidify modifiers to only rim, apply it, and then unwrap them in edit mode. They didn't really require any extra seams because they were pretty much flat already. And the next thing I work on is the hair. It ended up being quite simple because all my pieces are pretty much just long tubes with very even topology, so I could just add one long seam down the length of them. I tried to keep the seams somewhere where they weren't very visible from the outside. For the teeth, I just needed to add one long seam going along the bottom of the teeth, and that was pretty much enough. I didn't get any extra stretching or anything, so I didn't have much to worry about. And for stuff like the tongue and the teeth, I just had to add one long seam along the bottom. Now everything's unwrapped, but before I move on to the UV layout, I decide to mess around with the hair a bit more. I want the UV islands for all the hairs to be laid out as perfect grids. So I add a few extra seams around the tips to make that possible. Then in the UV editor, I use an add-on to straighten all the edges. I used UV Toolkit for this one, which is a paid add-on, but Text Tools also has an option to do that, and that's free. I'll leave a link to both of them in the description below. And now with all the objects unwrapped the way I want them, it's time to arrange everything onto the UV map. I could have used UV Packmaster for this, but in this case I wanted to arrange everything manually, 
because I wanted to keep things kind of grouped together based on the object they belong to. So I unhide everything and go around arranging all my islands. I start by moving all of them out of the way so that I have a kind of clean space to work with and I can then manually move everything into the places where I want them to be. Then I just go around arranging everything. I also adjust the sizes of individual islands so stuff that needs a bit more detail or is more important gets more space on the texture and stuff that's less important gets less space on the texture. So for example, I scaled up the head quite a bit compared to the rest of the body. And now, with a nicely laid out UV map, it's time for the next step, baking. For the last model I made, I used X normal to bake and that worked out really well, so I'm doing the same for this one. I make a new blend file to prepare the model for baking and make sure I have all the high poly and low poly versions of the model in it. Then I go around making sure any modifiers that still need to be applied are applied and everything is shrink wrapped properly. And then I explode everything. That means I make sure I have the high and low poly version of each object together and then I move them out of the way of everything else. So that way I don't have any objects overlapping that shouldn't be overlapping. I make sure I have the high and low poly objects in separate groups so it's easier to hide one and not the other. And then I start exporting, starting with the low poly objects. But first I have to add a triangulate modifier which I almost forgot. Once that's added and applied, I make sure I have all the low poly objects selected and then I go up to export, export as OBJ and make sure I have selected only turned on. Then I do the same thing for the high poly objects. And with that, I can move on to X normal for the baking. I make sure the high and low poly meshes are in their respective folders. I select the place where I want to bake to and I select the maps I want to bake. In this case, it's normal maps, cavity maps, and ambient occlusion. Beyond that, I use pretty much the same settings as I did for the last model. You might need to mess around a bit with stuff like ray distance to get everything to look just right. In my case, it worked out well with the ray distance turned relatively low. Now with all the textures baked, it's time to go back into Blender and finish up the materials. I open up a version of the model that's UV unwrapped but not yet exploded and then head into the materials and start adding in the textures that I baked. First thing I add is the normal map which I plug into a normal map node and then into the normal input of the principled BSDF. For everything to work properly I have to make sure that the image texture is set to non-color. Next, I grab the cavity map that I baked and plug that into the base color. However, I don't want this to be the actual base color of this model, so I plug it into a mix RGB node set to multiply, and then create a brand new image texture which I'm going to be using for the base color, and plug that into. 
And from here I can hop into texture paint mode and paint the model. I imported the reference sheet and pinned it into one of my viewports so that way I can just color pick off of it using S and then paint each part of the model the way I want it. I start by just filling in each object with a simple base color and then go in and add more detail. The first thing I do is the eyes. For that I take the default brush and adjust the profile to make it a lot sharper and then very very carefully just kind of stamp on the round shape of the eye. From there I can then adjust the size and profile of the brush and add more details. In order to get the color of the eyes to mirror over, I joined them together and applied their location. That way the regular old symmetry will work properly. I can then always go back later and separate them and put the origins back into the center of the eye. Next I work on the body. I start by using paint masks to quickly rough out the major regions of color and then go in with a brush to add a bit more detail. Like with sculpting, texture painting works best in my opinion when you work big to small, so figure out the main big regions of color first and then slowly add in more and more detail as you go. You can kind of always go back a bit and tweak stuff later on, but I find that way works a bit faster and it's just generally easier. As usual, Blender's projection painting was a bit of a pain to use. I ended up having kind of gaps or lines where I didn't want there to be any the stuff like the gradients along the arms and legs were annoying to make and kind of ended up a little bit rough but good enough. And I struggled quite a bit with stuff like the tail. Most of the issues during painting just come from the fact that it's pretty much projecting a 2D view of what you're painting onto the 3D model, so it gets really wonky with stuff that's either on the opposite side or that's kind of just perpendicular to your view. And that can be super annoying. I'm currently looking into like learning some other software, so I actually got myself Substance Painter and ZBrush. So in the future I might be doing my texture painting in one of those. Now with the body done, it's time to add a bit more detail to the hair. Instead of painting the hair manually, I add in a noise texture that's mapped to the UV map and adjust the scale on the x-axis to make it stretch along the length of the hair. Because of how the UV map works, it kind of follows the shape of the hair really nicely. Then I can adjust the color a bit and just mix it in with the base color of the hair and carefully paint in a bit more detail where I want some. And now the last thing left for me to paint is the teeth. I go in with a turquoisey color for the gums, the same I use for the inside of the mouth itself, and white for the teeth. And with that, the materials are done. They're not particularly complicated, just a couple of textures mixed together, but they can still be simplified down quite a bit. The normal map is fine as is, and I don't really have any roughness or metalness for this model, but the base color is made up of three different textures just kind of mixed together, and that's a bit much, especially since I'm trying to send the files to someone else. So I turn my render engine to cycles, add in an additional image texture, 
and then scroll down to the bake option and go to diffuse and turn off direct and indirect leaving only color and then i can gradually bake the base color for all the individual objects into one file And with that last bit of baking complete, the model is done. And here's how she turned out. I'm really really happy with her and the client is happy with her too, which is always great. And I really enjoyed the process on this one. I worked out a lot of stuff about my workflow and really managed to smooth it out a lot and make it a bit quicker and more efficient. I hope you guys enjoyed the process videos and maybe learned a thing or two from them. And in other news, the channel has hit 5,000 subscribers, which is really cool. Thank you for everyone who subscribed recently and for all of you who have been subscribed for a while now and watching all my videos since really early on. It's really cool to just see my audience grow and to have so many people like appreciate my art and enjoy what I make. I want to do something special to celebrate, but I'm not really sure what. I was thinking maybe a request live stream or some kind of raffle again, but I'm really not sure. If you guys have any suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. I really have no clue what I want to do for this. In other news, I've decided to shift my upload schedule from Tuesdays to Thursdays just to give me a bit more time in the week because at this point I actually have a bit more time during the week to work on videos than I do on the weekend. Anyway, that's been all for me for today. See you all in the next video. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like and subscribe and all that, and maybe check out one of my other videos to the right. If you'd like to see more of my art or maybe get a commission from me, I've put links to all that in the description below. And I've also put a link to the Discord server. Anyway, I hope you have a nice day and see you all next time.